previously on the lovely Fifi's channel. And gentlemen, welcome to the 10th annual Hunger Games. And Collins would pull through and be like, I'm back with the Hunger Games. And so I'm just so excited. I'm going to be unboxing the book and I'm going to just talk to you guys and how I feel. Like, this is insane. Like, gosh, guys, this is it doing the video of this whole entire book review when I finished and I'll see you guys when I'm done several months later well I'm back and I finally finished reading this book there I have a lot of things to talk about and a lot of thoughts and opinions that I would like to share but oh my gosh this book it's something so whoa let's just get right into the book hey everyone and welcome to today's video it's the lovely fifi here and for today's video i'm going to be reviewing the book the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins and yes i finally finished reading this um if you follow me if you are subscribed then you know that i did a previous video of unboxing the book and reading chapter one and i told you guys i told my viewers that as soon as i was done reading the book i would definitely do a book review and after two months i finally finished and here i am ready to discuss ready to talk about my thoughts and opinions and my feelings and i'm so excited so let's get on into the video let's go okay so i want to clarify that i took like a two month break so i got this in may and it's currently july so I took a two month basically break because the whole month of June I just wanted to you know relax because I graduated it was my birthday and I just want to take a pause so I took a two month pause but then I'm like but then I'm like you know what let me finish it because what kind of a reader am I so yeah it's July now so I finished it so I'm kind of sad that I finished it but at the same time I'm kind of glad I finished it because now I can just get this book out of the way so yeah let's just um get on with the review um i'm trying to keep this video really short i don't want to be very long yeah i'm gonna try to keep this quick and simple and a very good review so yeah let's get started also i just want to point out that i i should have worn my hunger game shirt like i did in the last video but it's somewhere deep in the pile of clothes that i have in my room so i can't find that but it doesn't matter we're here for the review so i'm so excited so i'm going to start off with a quick simple non-spoiler review for all of you who want to you know read read my perspective of this book so yeah okay so i really don't have much to say um like i don't have a lot to say for a non-spoiler review because everything that you know i have written down has spoiler so i'm just gonna give you guys a quick quick little review for non-spoilers which i probably already said that but here we go so um this this was a good book i did like it i really loved it i liked it i loved it um it gave really good description not only in the characters and their personalities but in the setting as well we see and read a lot of uh you know vivid descriptions about panem as well as um the people like the how they dress and everything which we already knew that from the og um hunger games but here it's different because this is the 10th annual hunger Games, so this is supposedly 64 years before the whole og um trilogy of hunger games so present snow is 18 it's the 10th annual hunger games so you see everything in a different perspective which i thought it was really good you see the the personas of each character and the dialogue between the characters everything that suzanne wrote that the character said really defines who they are as a character and i really love how suzanne did write ballads because hello <laughs> she wrote ballads within the story and the ballads also had some meaning like some you know it, when she read it you were like hmm you like think back and you connect and think about it within the story or within her own background story so i thought that was really 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 good you see some um connections 
and some similarities that you see from this book to the OG Hunger Games as well as some references such as songs and characters that you know and re read from this book, the prequel book, to the Hunger Games. And if you see me guys, I'm pointing at this because my Hunger Games books are literally behind the camera and my Funko Pops are there, so I'm, locking, I'm looking at it. I should be looking at the camera, but I'm looking at this. But yeah, so um, it talks about Snow and his journey. He talks about his childhood life and basically how, um, you know, how he has grown as a character to now in this book. And then he how he grows more, how he, he grows into the person character we see as Snow. So I really liked that. I really liked the whole story of him being a mentor in the games as well as his little love interest. Um, so yeah, it was really, really good. I really loved it. Um, you should read it. If you love The Hunger Games, then you should love this. But I must say that there have been some people who really didn't like it. They didn't really love it. They didn't think it was interesting. They didn't really think the story was good. But I'm not that type of person. Um, I was excited when I got it. I was excited when I read the first page. And I was excited throughout the whole entire book. And... I just love it. I liked it and it didn't disappoint me. So yeah, if you know, you should just give it a try. And if you don't like it, then at least you can say and no, say that you have read the prequel. So yeah, that's all I could say. So yeah, that's for my non-spoiler review. If you want to see or hear me more and elaborate more on this book, I did do a video before when I got this and I unboxed it. I did a chapter one review and my future thoughts and expectations for the book. So if you'd like to go check that out, please go ahead and check it out on my channel and you could hear and see more on what I have to say. If you have not read the book, then please do not continue watching because I will be discussing some spoilers. So if this is the end of the video for you guys, then thank you guys so, so much for watching. And yeah, this is the book. So for my spoiler people who have read the book, then please stay tuned because we are gonna go into some deep, deep thoughts and opinions. So yeah, let's go. All right, so we are into the spoiler section, the spoiler review for my people, for my readers who have readers who have who have read the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So a lot of things to say that people may or may not like people may or may not agree people may disagree but i have a lot to say about this so yeah here we go spoiler review now okay to start off i want to say that i did love it i love it and i like it i loved it from start to finish but there's one thing that really 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 bothered me but we're gonna get into that um later so yeah i love i have heard and read some people say that they didn't like it some people did love it everyone has different opinions i respect everyone's opinions but this is my opinion and if you don't like it then too bad because you have your own opinion and this is my opinion i loved it i liked it suzanne collins never disappoints and i just i love it it was everything not everything that i ever thought of but it was really good it was really okay, so i finished this book uh exactly sometime i don't know when but it was like literally 2 a.m and as soon as i closed the book i started crying and i'm like i have to write down some things so i have my little handy dandy old ipod that i still have and still use and i wrote down in my little notes um some stuff basically my spoiler review and so yeah i'm just gonna share it with you guys and I'm just gonna go down the list. It's very long, but again, I'm trying to keep this video really short. So let's discuss. All right, so I'm gonna go down all the lines. So the first thing I put is I like 100% loved it, liked it. There's no hate, there's no anything that I didn't like from the story. So that's one. So the one thing that I didn't like, like I said before, there's one thing that I really didn't like that bothered me. And that was the chapter in the scene slash the point where President Snow or Snow and Lucy turned on each other. Okay, let's just talk about that for a second. So I said, I'm confused as to why the two turn on each other. You know, um, I have questions such as, where's Lucy? Is she dead? Was she faking the whole love thing 
or snow so that really got me thinking you know did lucy really r realize the whole thing between coriolanus snow and sejanus and then she like got scared just like snow said within the book um so that kind of really made me upset <laughs> and confused i don't know why it's just so sudden because supposedly they were gonna you know run away and then all of a sudden they're like psych and then they both turn on each other like she like released a snake on him and he was poo -poo 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 pewing everywhere so i'm like wait i thought you guys liked each other so i was really confused that really actually like broke my heart i do not know why so yeah there's those questions. Um, the next thing I said is I am very sad that I didn't read any connections between Snow being a family member related to Katniss or Lucy being connected um, to Katniss, like being a family member or something. You know, the whole idea I had on this book was I thought either Snow was going to be some sort of relative to Katniss or Lucy was gonna be some sort of relative to Katniss and we were gonna find out. That's what I had, you know, in my mind this whole entire time as I was reading. So I was really, really confused that at the end, we didn't get anything. So yeah, um, let's see. The next thing I put is I liked references that is that is used in the book. So references such as the Valley Song and the Hanging Tree as well as Katniss in the book. So those were my favorite things. When Lucy Gray um, sang the Valley Song and then the Hanging Tree, I was like, <gasps> that's what made me, you know, think more, oh my God, you know, Lucy and Snow are gonna probably get married, have a child, and then some, some of that might be, you know, connected to Katniss because Katniss was referred to in the book, the song too, how what else does Katniss know the song? So I thought, oh my god, it has to do something with Katniss and Snow and everything. But no. <laughs> but I did love the references and of the songs and in Katniss, so points for that. Um, I did like the whole Mockingjay, Jabberjay, Mockingbird thing about the Mockingbirds and the Jabberjays reproducing to create the Mockingjays. thought that was really good. I really liked that. I was like, ooh! So yeah, the whole thing between Snow not liking the Mockingjays. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. So, um, we're going down more. Um, I didn't have any sympathy for Snow. Yes, okay, so I did not have sympathies for snow the whole entire time i didn't grow fond of snow like as a character i didn't really like him or have sympathy for him i kept in mind you know this 18 year old snow becomes the snow we know in the hunger Games. so i really didn't have you know much connection or like emotional like i love this character no <laughs> literally no i didn't have any i didn't like anything of snow i didn't you know have sympathy for him so i'm just i was neutral i was chill i'm like i'm reading this just to read it so yeah um i kept in mind that he was no i really said that already but yeah um i didn't have a favorite character that is true i while i was reading the book i didn't really have a character where i was like oh my god i love this character so i was i'm pretty neutral with the characters in the book i really thought i would have had a favorite character but not really. I just like the characters, but I don't really have a favorite character. So the characters were okay. I put again, the sad part was the whole Lucy and Snow turning on each other thing. That scene when they were out and they were escaping. And then all of a sudden, Snow was like, I can't do this anymore. What if I go back to District 12? So the thing I found it um, interesting was basically they both, they both turn on each other. But it was irony because Snow was like, I am a head out. What if I go back to District 12? And I'm like, but homeboy, I thought you wanted to run away with Lucy. And then Lucy, well, I don't really know what happened to Lucy, but all of a sudden I guess she's like, I'm a head out as well. So <laughs> I'm just like, I'm sad about the whole thing, but confused. Um, the next thing I wrote down was I was confused at the end with the morphing. That's something that I want to talk about. I read it as snow taking the morphing at the very end of the book but then i went back and i reread it and i thought snow got morphing and put it into um dean highbottom like he gave it to dean highbottom i don't know the whole morphing thing got me confused so if you have read the book please give me some clarification i think 
Presence No Gabe Morphing to Dean Highbottom. Um, the next thing I put is that I really like the ballads. Um, the only ballad that I found confusing was the Lucy Gray ballad that Lucy sang. I was confused as to the connections with Lucy, you know, talking about the ballad Lucy <laughs> and the song. I was like, huh? So after the whole scene when Snow and Lucy turned on each other, I went back and I read the ballad of Lucy Gray's ballad and I saw some connections about like the whole, you know, thing. And I will give you guys an example. Okay, so I'm just gonna like literally read it real quick. But the sweet fate of Lucy Gray will never more be seen. This is connecting to, at the end of the book, we don't really know what happened to Lucy. Um, Tonight will be a stormy night. You to the town must go. And take a lantern, child, to light your mother through the snow. So the part, tonight will be a stormy night, in the ballad kind of like connected me with the scene that it was actually raining and it was a storm raining so that was interesting the village clock has just struck two and yonder is the moon so that also kind of connected me to like the scene again where snow and lucy gray run away i think it was noon that day that day that time was noon so i really thought that was interesting as carefree as a mountain doe a fresh new path she broke her feet dispersed the powdery snow that rose up just like smoke. So there I was like, the part where Snow realizes that she's gone, he sees her, you know, her footsteps, her her tracks, and her feet dispersed the powdery snow, which is snow where she basically just left. So I kind of did have that, you know, connection theory. I have this theory that maybe this ballad is talking about Lucy Gray's fate. <laughs> I don't really know. But when I read that ballad, first I was like, huh? And then after I read the scene of when Lucy Gray and Snow turned on each other, I went back and I read it and I kind of like made these connections, theories, inference, you know, about this. So yeah, that's all I got to say about that. I did see a few things coming within the book. So as I was reading, I predicted, you know, um, for example, the part when Sejanus went into the arena, I kind of guessed that, I kind of knew that was going to come, and I also kind of knew that Snow was going to have to go in there and drag him out, so that was like a predictable thing. There were a few more other things um, that was, you know, predictable that I saw coming, but, you know, whatever, really don't care. But although I have to say, al although I did see it coming there was some things that i also did not see coming for example snow killing bobbin in the arena so i'm like whoa wow that's interesting a twist even though i did see it coming the element of surprise suzanne was like haha even though you saw it coming i added a little bit more spice to the reading thing anyways <laughs> the next thing i wrote is i understand how snow um shaped slash how do what's the word um contributed the the games you know his ideas and concepts of the games it makes more sense because everything that snow proposed or thought or said about the games is what we see in the hunger games you know what i mean um the trilogy the og trilogy so it makes more sense and to me, it makes it made more sense, and we learned more the practices slash contribution slash the original things that the Hunger Games is known for in the OG trilogy that we learned. You know what I mean? You know what I, you know what I mean? That we see it that it starts off in the prequel, and it came from the prequel, and then we see how it contributed and has made its way to. Um, the OG Hunger Games and that's because Snow was an intern for Dr. Gall who was a game maker so uh, obviously <laughs> so yeah the next I hope I hope that made sense to you guys so anyways the next thing I said is I want to know what happens you know with Snow like this the basically the story ends after everything he's been through after he went his summer vacation and being a peacekeeper he comes back and he's back. You know, he goes to school, he's under Dr. Gall's wing and an internship and everything, and it, it ends there. But I want to know what happens to Snow more because this story is just when he's 
only 18 and more has to have happened from 18 to when he's 80 <laughs> in the hunger Games. so either suzanne you know left it like that she's gonna do another one i do not know but i want to know what happens more to snow because i have to say um in the mockingjay tigress who is also snow's cousin which that really really made me so <laughs> happy but shocked in a way when i first read it i was like oh, no way i was like cool it was cool you know I, it was shocking it was cool i didn't see that coming so i really liked that but as i was saying um in Mockingjay, when Katniss is ready to go kill President Snow, we see that Katniss goes to Tigress. Katniss is like, I'm off to kill President Snow. And Tigress is like, you know what? Do it, sis. Make him pay for it. Or, you know, basically encourage her, basically saying that she's agreeing that she's off to kill Snow. Why? <laughs> why? There has to be a reason why, you know what I mean? More has, ha has to happen. There has to be a really, really more reason to what snow did which of course we know he's very old mean man manipulative man very tyrant man but the book ends with him and tigress you know their family they were fine you know they were, everything was all happy with daisies and rainbows for snow but what really did happen between those two that tigress had to be like kill my cousin for me you know what i mean so something has to happen more from the time span from when he was 18 till he was 84 so or 80 or however he is in the old hunger Games. so that really made me wonder and think <laughs> what happened between tigress and snow and his family so yeah um the okay the next thing i did i said or i wrote down is did snow really like slash love lucy and did lucy love him back they really like each other did they really because <laughs> I, don't, I don't know the whole thing about like snow liking lucy lucy you know showing you know intentions with the whole you know hugs and you know the whole relationship to at the end realizing coming to the end and you know finding out that at the end they just turn on each other like, it makes me confused like i don't know i don't know <laughs> um i'm just gonna say yes but i i don't know yes and no that's all i'm, I'm gonna say yes but then up to a point where okay the next thing i wrote down is now i understand how snow is the way he is <laughs> with the whole katniss and the mocking jay thing so yeah i said um probably triggers him the whole katniss thing and the mocking jay because snow hates mocking jays how triggered snow gets with the whole katniss thing and the rebellion <gasps> i just think about the rebellion and sejanet also i don't know if it sejanus or sejanus I think it's Sejanus, but I saw a TikTok on Twitter that some girl said Sejanus and then she's getting bullied. So please don't bully me because I really don't know how to pronounce it. So anyways, we're going back. I said, did Lucy find out about Snow and him killing his best friend? So the thing between Snow and Sejanus. And is she dead? <laughs> I wrote that. Is she dead? Um. Oh, sorry if I'm also repeating myself. I literally wrote this at 2 a.m. and I finished at 3 a.m. So sorry if I'm repeating some of this and the, the, the vocabulary sounds bad. But yeah, one thing is either Lucy didn't really like snow. It was a trap. And she said, I'm about to get this man and like leave him. Or she really did like him until she realized that he did kill Sejanus. And she's like, you're a monster. I'm leaving. Okay, she wouldn't say that, but she'd be like, yo, I'm gonna head out. This guy's a murderer. And that's why she left and turned and tried to kill him. Don't know. Is she dead? Don't know. I don't want to think that she's dead, but is she dead? We don't know. Suzanne Lily left, left it blank. I wonder if Snow tries to forget about Lucy or he has, or does he have memories and thoughts about her? So like I said before, the book ends with him going back 
to the Capitol. He's in he's an intern for the games. He's going to school. And it ends like that. But like I said, there has to be more for, from when he's 18 to the time in the Hunger Games. So my question is, does he have um, memories of everything? You know, does he have memories of her? Thoughts of her? Does he miss her sometimes? Does it, you know, if he's just sitting there one day at school and he's like, Lucy Gray, Lucy, and he just starts talking, you know, like, I just have a question. Does he, does she, does he wonder about her? Or does he try to forget about her? So that really, like, questions, like, it has a question. That That's the question for me, you know, whatever. The next thing is that it's interesting to see, oh, this was a good one. <clears throat> it's interesting to see how Snow's character progresses to a manipulative person. And I think that's also, I think Lucy plays a big part of that. I think, um... Lucy changes his perspective. I literally wrote this down. Lucy changes his perspective that he literally, that the book literally says, Snow's up here. He has to marry someone who's down here. Because if she's up here, he has to be the most powerful, manipulative person that he is. So it's really interesting to see how Snow's character develops into the Snow we see in the OG. Because, you know, I think there were some parts where Snow, you know, was making... Set, like snow realized what sedges was talking about and i guess there were some parts just a little bit not that much though because he was pure capital kid but there are some things where he's like is sedges is right or is he not right he's probably he doesn't make sense you know it kind of makes sense you know i think snow was like mm, mm, mm. and then dr gall was like capital 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 manipulation scaring him you know with the whole snake thing and the whole arena thing so this book literally you know molds him into Coriolanus Snow, the one that we know and see, because the beginning of the book, from what I read, <laughs> Snow was just a capital kid. I love the capital, although the capital has this and this and this, but I'm a Snow family and I represent my family. But then I think, you know, Dr. Gall <laughs> slaps him with common sense about you're a capital kid, and I don't know. I don't know. It's just, it's interesting. I said, like I said, his character progresses into a more manipulative mean in power person so yeah if that didn't make sense i'm sorry i'm trying to make sense <gasps> i love this okay so i said that i loved the re mention that there are characters such as heavens v flickerman and crane so they meant um suzanne mentioned there are some characters so like the flickerman who did the hunger games heavens beat and crane oh my god i loved it i really i was so happy i'm like i'm so glad she incorporated those names in the prequel books so that made me happy so thank you suzanne <laughs> next thing um going back to the whole book itself i said i thought it was great I loved it and I was never bored or tired of anything and that is true although the chapters were very long they're like 20 to 22 pages long it was so great I really liked it it's a good job so good job Suzanne <laughs> and again I mentioned never liked or sympathized snow up until the whole Lucy and snow showdown <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so I did feel sorry for Snow, but just for that one second, because I'm like, the girl he supposedly loves just left her like that? You know, I'm like, what? And then the, and supposedly Lucy, who loved him back, left like that? So that really kind of made me sad a little bit and confused, but that's the only thing that I really did have sympathy after that, when supposedly we found out that, like, he was sent to become a peacekeeper, I'm like we back into not liking snow again so yeah that's the only thing that i have to say um the next thing i said is i think my heart hurts it's true my heart my heart and head really did hurt after i finished the book i literally started crying so i said i think my heart hurts and i'm sad because i didn't get an ending or a good explanation between lucy and snow although some don't ship I ship, I like them together, although people may say it sounds weird or they read it as an awkward ship. Um, just reading up until the Snow and Lucy showdown questions me that if they really like each other, like I said before. So, yes or no, that they really like each other, we may never know, but Snow was ready to turn on Lucy. So, who knows what Lucy knows. I did ship it. Not like a hardcore Cadence and Peter ship. I'm like... Aw, they like each other. This is cute. You know what I mean? The whole, you know, mentor. Although, 
people might not approve. I just still liked it, you know? He liked her. Don't know why he liked her, but not that I don't like Lucy or anything. It's just, I don't know. It's just different. Like, all of a sudden, she's coming, and Snow's like, I like her. And she's like, kind of like you, too. And so they, like, you know, he gives her his mom's powder thing. They give, you know, he gives her food, and then she's, like, saying stuff. She says, like, some few things that she says that she likes Snow. Those two little things, I really did like them together. I did like a little bit. I did ship them together. I really did like their <laughs> relationship. Not not like Katniss and Peta, but you know, they had, you know, when they were at the hob and then he went to go see her and they were hugging each other and they kissed each other like that. I was like, aww. So that's why I did. I did like them together. I did write that I cry. <laughs> Cried 100%. And I also added, again, sad that there was no explanation on where Lucy is. Is she dead? Is she not dead? And there was no explanation on Lucy being a relative or related to Katniss. So I have more to say about that later. So I said, I was even though there wasn't a connection with Lucy and Katniss or Katniss and Snow, I think Suzanne did it on purpose. I said as she wanted it to be different and have Lucy as her own character or as her own person, which I respect that. Yeah. I don't know if Suzanne thought that, I, honestly, I don't even know if a lot of people thought what I was thinking. Like, the, when this book came out, I'm like, oh my god, are we going to find out the whole snow and... No Katniss thing, are they going to be related or not? Like, for me, my expectation was I was going to find out if Lucy had some sort of family relationship related to Katniss or Snow. But I didn't read that, so that's why that kind of disappointed me a little bit. That's why I was sad and confused. But now that I see it, Suzanne left it as, you know, it's up to you to decide. You can decide if she's alive or if she's dead. So, yeah. For me, I think she's dead. Although I don't want her to be dead because, think, well, if she's alive, I don't know. It's just really interesting. But I really did like how, mm, not really. Okay, let me rephrase that. I, I I thought it was okay that Suzanne left it like that. But I also respected, respected it that she left it like that because Lucy is her own character. She, we don't want to be another Ray Skywalker. So we don't want Lucy to be another Ray, you know, so... Okay, so the next, the second to last thing that I wrote is I said Suzanne did leave this book open for another book or continuation of the book, like she stated at the end of the book, which um, I really, which I have to add that I really, really did love that Suzanne added comprehension questions. She added comprehension questions. There's a reader's guide, a question A, love that, and it talks about like, I think it has to do with psychology, I think, because I see her mention um, Enlightenment thinkers, John Locke, and Hobbes, and, like, psych psychology people. Like, she talks about, like, history and stuff, and, like, the more social, psycholo psychological things that influenced her, and, like, socialism and everything, politics, and I love it. There's a question and answer about that, which I really, really did it, I really, really did love. Um, oh, the whole, um, the whole, oh, and Shakespeare, too. I really did love the whole thing. She says here, I like the idea that the covey, as lovers of natures, would honor all colors, not the, not just the flashy ones. So, top or tape? in ivory and gray like a winter day so lucy gray is lucy gray <laughs> so i really really like that it made ivory so you know i love that so i really did like that okay anyways as i was saying question this got this this question questions this book could be used in in school when i really really philosopher tom hobbs believed that human beings are selfish creatures as it you know amazing it really shocks me i really really did love that there are 13 discussion questions that I thought is just amazing that schools can now use this for like a unit in school. And I really, really love that. So Suzanne, that's awesome. So I really, really did like that. I all of a sudden can't find it. 
But I did remember reading, unless I was, <laughs> unless I was actually like crazy reading. It was like 2 a.m. I thought I remember her saying something about like, like leaving it open for a continuation or something. Her, she said something, the question and she said, yeah, maybe I left it open for another book or for a continuation of this. I don't know. I remember reading something about that, but I wrote it down. It was 2 a.m. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> so the very, very last thing. After I finished um, writing my thoughts and opinions, this whole Katniss and Snow and Lucy thing, the whole thing, so made me wonder. Like, there has to be something. Because how does Katniss know the Hanging Tree song and Deep in the Meadow? Because Lucy wrote that. There has to be some sort of connection. So I started Googling and I started my research and I stumbled across a fan theory, which I have never read or seen before, that really, really caught my attention and that really, like, changed, I guess, my perspective on everything that made me happy, that made me realize that although I didn't get what I wanted in this book, this fan theory kind of, you know, makes it makes it up for it. So yeah, so I, saw, I, I wrote down, I saw a fan theory of Maid Ivory, which is Lucy's cousin, um, being Katniss's grandma. I said, although it's not what I would have wanted, it it's at least something. So although I didn't want it made, I, although I didn't want made Ivory to be Katniss's grandma, but at least it's something. <laughs> it's something, and I'm happy with it. Eh, although it's a fan theory, I don't know if Suzanne's gonna make it like canon or like confirm it. But it makes more sense. That fan theory makes more sense, and it's just, it just you know. It makes up for what I didn't get in the book. So, yes, Maid Ivory is eight um, at the time of the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. So it kind of makes more sense. You know, Maid Ivory was there when Lucy sang the the Hanging Tree song and when she sang the Valley song. So And when she got the Katniss plan. So it makes sense, you know. If Lucy did die, then Maid Ivory, you know, has that memory of lucy i did the whole made ivory being kind of his grandma thing although it's not what i wanted it still makes me kind of happy you know that there was some sort of a relationship between you know lucy gray and her cousins with katniss so yeah <laughs> and then the very last thing apart from that i said my heart hurts my head hurts i loved it i liked it a five out of five a ten out of ten crying emoji heart emoji everything That's all I really have to say about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It was a lot. I hope you guys, um, you know, understood what I was trying to say. Sorry if I didn't make any sense. Again, I was writing this at 2 a.m. Sorry if there was, if my vocabulary was bad. I wrote this and I'm purely just reading this off of what I wrote down. I wrote it on my phone, but I'm using my phone to record, so I had to send it to myself on my iPod, but... Yeah, that's all of my thoughts and opinions, my questions, everything, every little thing that I noticed and wrote down. I That's it. I wrote down. That's all I had to say about the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Suzanne Collins did a really good job. I loved it. I absolutely love it. I just love the Hunger Games and I love everything about it. And so it was really good, you know, very, very good. I really liked how it was written again. I was not bored. I was like, whoa, ooh, ah, really? Oh my gosh, no way. Like, I just really liked it. That's all my um, initial thoughts, opinions, um, questions, comments, everything that I have come across that I thought of from this book. I'm actually really glad I finished it. Now I have that over with. I do kind of want to... Um, reread everything again so i might reread this again and then go on reading the hunger games catching fire and mocking jay but that's gonna be probably later because i have a whole huge stack of books sitting right there and i have to sort them out and see what i'm gonna read next which i will do a tbr kind of interesting and if you have any like any thoughts or opinions that you have um, and if you read the book, please comment down below. Comment down below what you thought. Like, let me know. Like, let's talk in the chats. Let's continue on this book talk chat. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you want to see more book reviews 
or any book related videos please comment down below i really do love making book videos because i love books and i'm a bookworm so yeah um please hit the big thumbs not the big he's hit the thumbs up button if you like this video if you haven't read it wait if you haven't read it then how are you watching it to this point i just let's just anyways whatever just comment down below what you think so yeah this was not a very um you know when you buy something and you're like why did i buy this no i bought this and i'm like i'm so glad i bought this well either way it's suzanne collins and the hunger games so yeah anyways thank you guys so much for watching and until next time bye oh wait i almost forgot oh my god <laughs> i can't wait for the movie I want to see it. I'm so excited. I can't wait to actually see this come to the screen. Also, The Hanging Tree. Whenever I hear it, read it, or sing it, it's just so different for me. Like, the whole, everything changes. The perspective, the thought, the meaning, everything. I see it such in a different point of view and perspective that's just so, so, like, my heart is like, oh my god. Like, it's so emotional, so yeah that's 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 all i have to say i'm done so thank you guys so much for watching and until next time bye also my led lights we love them i love them okay bye also can we just acknowledge the fact that i have my mocking jade katniss mocking jade funko pop on the ballad of songbirds and snakes like the irony i love that <laughs>